March 14, 1971. Gary Green was diagnosed with major depressive disorder with psychotic features and prescribed a schizophrenia medication. The hospital determined that Green did not need to be committed and discharged him. Two days later, a different doctor diagnosed Green with bipolar disorder in an outpatient setting. At this time Green was married to Lovett Armstead. Green has previously been sent to prison for stabbing his high school girlfriend and robbery. But Lovett was tired of the marriage and wanted to leave Gary Green and move on with her life. Armstead wrote two separate notes to Green. One said she loved him but needed to part ways to do what was best for her. The second note said that Green was to move out of their home immediately. Green responded in anger and disbelief. He thought Armstead and her children were involved in a plot against him. After reading the note Gary Green was so angry then he started attacking his wife Lovett Armstead. Shortly before the murders, Green checked himself into a mental hospital for about five days but then asked to be released. On September 22, 2009 Green then fatally stabbed his wife Armstead and drowned her daughter, six-year-old Jasmine Montgomery in a bathtub, killing both of them. The attack on Armstead was so violent that one knife broke and Green grabbed another. Armstead also grabbed a knife and stabbed Green twice behind his shoulder. But her stab wounds were too much and she died a slow, painful, agonizing death. Green then grabbed the girl and drowned her in the bathtub. Green later told police that it was so bad, he had to turn away his face while he killed the six-year-old child. He showered in the same tub and went to pick his stepsons up from church. When they got home, he held the brothers at knife point and stabbed the youngest one in the abdomen. Lovett Armstead's two sons who were 9 years old and 12 years old, Gary Green started to stab the youngest in the abdomen, when both boys pleaded with Green to spare their lives, which he did. The youngest boy said to Green, we're too little to die, the younger brother, told Green. We won't tell anybody about it. The boys also told Green that they loved him. Green told the boys he killed their mother and sister because he didn't want to get a divorce. After Green told the boys he would spare their lives, he told them he had something to show them. He took them into the bedroom and showed them their dead mother. I killed your mom because I loved her to death, Green told the boys. They then saw the body of their sister face down on the bloody floor of the bathroom. Her hands were bound behind her back with duct tape. The older boy was ordered by Gary Green to retrieve his pills, forcing him to walk through the blood that covered the bathroom floor. He then told them he intended to kill himself, which he attempted by taking massive amounts of Tylenol and Benadryl. The attempt was unsuccessful and he eventually turned himself in to police, where he confessed to the murders. October 27, 2010, Gary Green walked himself to the police station and confessed to the crimes. During the confession, Green told police that he had heard voices in his head telling him to kill Armstead and her children, that he believed the family was plotting against him and that he thought by killing the family he would ensure that they would all be reunited in heaven. Gary Green was charged for his crimes. On November 22, 2010, the jury found a probability that the defendant, Gary Green, would commit future criminal acts of violence that would constitute a continuing threat to society and that taking into consideration all of the evidence including the circumstances of the offense, the defendant's character and background, and the personal moral culpability of the defendant, Gary Green, 
a sufficient mitigating circumstance or circumstances to warrant that a sentence of life imprisonment rather than a death sentence be imposed. Gary Green was sentenced to death on November 22, 2010. While experts testified at his trial that Green likely had schizoaffective disorder, his lawyers say his defense counsel did not adequately look at how the condition impacted his life, or what role it played in the murders. Under Texas law, jurors are allowed to consider mitigating evidence such as mental illness when deciding on a death sentence. Green appealed to the Texas Court of Criminal Appeals which upheld his conviction and death sentence. An explanation of Green's manifestation of sheets or affective disorder would have aided the jury in weighing Green's moral culpability for his offense. It is clear from Green's statements that his mental state at the time of the crime was heavily influenced by his severe and persistent mental illness, especially as filtered through his severe cognitive limitations. The U.S. Supreme Court in 2002 prohibited the execution of people with intellectual disabilities. Texas defines intellectual disability based on low IQ scores, with 70 generally considered a threshold. How inmates interact with others and care for themselves. And whether deficiencies in those areas occurred before the age of 18. The lowest IQ score that Green submitted in his state proceedings was 78, placing him in the borderline range of intellectual functioning. Green was also involved in an ongoing legal battle over the state's use of expired drugs to kill prisoners. With fewer pharmacies willing to produce execution drugs, the Texas Department of Criminal Justice has for years extended the use by dates for lethal injections, which could make the process more painful. Inmates say the state prison system should not be allowed to extend the expiration dates of its execution drugs. They claim this practice violates the U.S. Constitution's prohibition of cruel and unusual punishment. After 13 years on Texas death row, Gary Green was executed on March 7, 2023. Green died at the state penitentiary in Huntsville, Texas, at 7.07 .07 p.m. local time Tuesday the 7th of March 2023. The execution came after several appeals were denied. He issued a final written statement before his death. Veda, Jared, Ray I'm sorry, no I'm not sorry, I apologize for all the harm I have caused you and your family. We ate together, we broke bread together, we laughed and cried together as a family. I'm sorry I failed you, there's nothing I can do. I'm not just saying that because I'm laying on this gurney. We were all one and I broke that bond right or wrong I took not one, but two people that we all loved, and I had to live with that while I was here. I ask that you forgive me, not for me but for y'all. I'm fixing to go home and y'all are going to be here. I want to make sure you don't suffer. You have to forgive me to heal and move on. Sorry JT. I always loved you and I told you I will never say goodbye, but this is goodbye. There's nothing I can do to bring your mom and sister back. One thing about the man I used to be, is that I never stopped loving y'all. See y'all on the other side. God bless you. I'm done warden. Gary Green was 51 years old at the time of his execution. Thank you for watching Death Row.